Hi, we're back talking about lessons that we can learn from how we as a county have been responding to COVID-19. And you know, when I hear all of these stories, one thing that's really stood out to me is how much they have to do with making those personal connections with our customers. And that reminds me of the Henrico Way. So if you wouldn't mind sharing, what does the Henrico Way mean to you? You know, it's all about public service and public service, how we deliver that service. Um, you have the ability uh, to do things on any given day in a very real way for our citizens. And whether it's in a library or at social services or um, at, at a community event at- At the landfill? At the landfill. I mean, all of those areas, all of those touch points I mean, we have the ability of leaving a citizen with a positive impression. And, you know, you think about it. We spend a lot of time at work, right? Yeah. And so if you can, if, what good is it if all you do is log in hours? Because you're going to spend a lot of time away from your family, from your loved ones. And then ultimately, you know, shouldn't you do something with that time? And what I have seen with our employees is you all figure out a way each and every time to be able to make something out of, I mean. Nothing. Right. And show your heart. You know, that's also the Henrico way is, is servitude with empathy. So when I think about personal connection, just a powerful example of that is the two call centers that you two have been involved in. So Elizabeth, would you share more about what your call center is so we can learn about it? Sure, um, I am helping supervise the COVID information support line call center. Um, we answer questions about county operations and services um, as well as help direct people to other informational resources for things that are outside of the county scope. You know, ultimately, it's efforts like what Elizabeth has undertaken. Yeah. Right now, you know, you, you keep hearing nationally about this curve with COVID and where are we as a nation and as a county, we're doing pretty well. I mean, for you to be able to answer questions, to get people to a position where they can have answers or they can be tested or do some of the things where we went outside of the purely governmental. I mean, how did, when you first started, so you started the effort, did you know that in day two or day three, the questions would evolve? And I know you didn't have all of the answers initially, but tell us about where you went, where you didn't think you would go as you first started. There was a lot of that. Um, I walked in on the second day as the secondary supervisor, and it felt like they'd been there for months. Um, so I had to hit the ground running and figure out what everybody else had already learned. Um, but every single time we picked up the phone, we had no idea what they were going to ask. We had no idea where we were going to, you know, find that information. We always had a good starting page with the Henrico website and the COVID dashboard. Um, and we started building all of these resources and phone numbers and places that, hey, do you know where to get, where do people go for dog licenses? Um, finance. Um, can we still get marriage licenses? Are we still doing that? You know, county offices are closed. Are they still doing? Yes, they are still doing marriage licenses. Um, is the dump open? Can I take my trash out? Um, so every time we picked up the phone, it was a, okay, what's going to happen? What are they going to ask? Um, and that's not that's not out of the norm for library staff. Um, we get a lot of questions where we don't know where to find the answer and we have to figure it out. Um, so it was very much that sort of thing where we answer the phone, we listen, we try and figure out what they need. Um, we've learned a lot about county services, um, the courts, um, social services, uh, DPU, and schools, a lot about schools. Um, and we've gotten to practice a lot of our empathy, just being able to listen to people um, and make those connections where so many people were so very surprised when they called this number and there's a real person on the end of the line. Yeah. That was probably my favorite part. That's 
awesome. And, and when you think about those calls, you know, were there any specific calls that, that jumped out? I mean, I guess there are probably so many that, that really just, just stood out to you where, where you knew, wow, we're, we're doing something, something special here. Anytime we had um, someone call and they were like, I, I don't know where my next meal is coming from. I, I don't know how to get to the meal distribution sites for schools for my kids. Um, I, I don't know how to deal with the situation we're in right now. Um, to be able to connect people with the, with the services and get them quickly, get them in touch with people to get the masks or let them know. For the people who don't have internet access, helping them get information was one of the biggest things. Um, so how can I do these things that I do normally if I don't have internet, if I can't go in person? Um, how we've had plenty of people call who needed translator services. Um, and we very thankfully had access to that and were trained on that. Thank you, IT. Um, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of thanks there. Um, but so that we, we got a call at one point from a local group that works with Richmond refugees who was just making sure that, that we could be used as a resource for anybody to call and that we had translators. Um, and we were able to say, yes, we can definitely do that. Yes, we That's have incredible. resource right. for translators. When you think of a pandemic, you know, a lot of the frontline uh, staff that you think about in that terms is public health, public safety, and, and you know, janitors, but really the call center front lines, I mean, you are the, the first point of contact in some circumstances where we fully understand what the needs of the community are, right? And I think there's a lot more value to those to that call center than just providing answers. You're also providing input for us to better meet the needs of the community. And and mind you, we didn't have to do that, right? We didn't. There was no rule book, as the manager stated, that we had to stand up a call center. But it's what the community needed for so many reasons. And you think about you know the, our changing population. Think about the fact that we have a hundred different languages that are spoken in our schools mm -hmm. and just the fear factor. You know, you've got a pandemic, you have, you know, somewhere between a recession and a depression and the, who are the folks that are losing their jobs first? And the fact that, you know, someone can reach out and talk to someone who may not know the answer, but if the answer is, let me look or let me, let me see if I can figure something out. You're going into a realm that, that goes far beyond, you know, the reason that, that you work for the county. 